Hello everybody, I'm Rebecca from Rebecca's Creations and today I'm starting a brand new mini challenge. Now you guys loved my Disney Princess um, Tiny Home Challenge. So like I said, I had to join a trend, everyone was doing it, I had to take part. It's like I just, ah, uh, one of those FOMO things, fear of missing out and whatnot. And today I thought I would do the same challenge again, but we're doing Disney villains. So I chose the 16 most iconic ones in my opinion and we're going to do these guys, we're going to do these 16 and it's going to be a lot of fun and yeah it's the same amount of um, characters as last time because it's just you know I like this layout, the, the layout works well for me so yeah we're doing it. Another 64 by 64 lot and I, there's not, I don't have very many 64 by 64 free lots so I ended up going for this one here on the island. Honestly it kind of works, it's kind of giving like descendants and obviously we all know descendants that kicked off to the Isle of the Lost. So honestly, there's still the iron thing going on. It does make sense in like a crazy way. It makes total sense. I would have liked to do it though in the Forgotten Hollow or like the um, Glare Brook, you know, one of those ones. But obviously, them lots are too small. So we could have. So we're doing it here. And yeah, I'm going to spin the wheel and we're going to see who we have for our first one. Now we're going to read out the characters that I've chosen and you guys can tell me if you are think I chose some good ones. So, my 16 I've chosen are Maleficent, Evil Queen, Jafar, Cruella, Dr. Bastillier, Hades, Captain Hook, Mother Gothel, Gaston, Kim Minifico, Frollo, Queen of Hearts, Ursula, Lady Tremaine, Scar and Yzma. So they're the 16 I've chosen and yeah, I'm going to spin and see who our first character is. Spinning around, there's loads of characters to choose from. Our first character is, oh my gosh, we are starting with the queen of all evil and the villain club essentially, Maleficent.
everyone. I'm done with this house and it looks pretty cool. So yeah, excited for the big unveiling. And there we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was a bit nervous about doing this house originally because I mean it didn't look very easy. <laughs> we have all the the rock work and everything. But I think I managed to pull it off. This rock, these rocks are actually from the Journey to Tabatu, like Star Wars pack, and they're like the perfect rock. It's like insane. Also, play tested. This house is completely workable. So yeah, it's great. Anyways, let's go and have a look. So yeah, um, this is based off the Stephen Beauty uh, Maleficent Castle from the original movie. Um, so yeah, obviously on the movie she has like a whole bridge situation going on. But I had to do a staircase instead, but honestly I think it still rocks pretty well. I, I love it. And yeah, just in general, I think it came across so nicely. So what's really cool is that we actually have like a basement, but it's unusable because it's like there's so much rock work down here and you're not really supposed to use this bit particularly. I mean it's technically a basement, but that's just like a ignore that room sort of room. Now if we actually go into here though, this is where all the magic happens. So this is sort of the um, kitchen. Now obviously I used the Castle Estate um, kit a lot in this build today. So definitely used for one to have if you guys have that one. I'm trying to get the whole kitchen if we can. I think that will do. So this is like the kitchen stroke dining room. It's ooze, it's Maleficent if you get what I mean. Maleficent energy is all over the place. We've got this cool little section here. We've got this fridge which looks super cool. I just love it. Got a lot of um, cobwebs and a broken brick everywhere because obviously I mean Maleficent's not going to take care of her house. Despite the fact I did literally build her like a clean room so I mean 50-50. <laughs> here we have a little dining room table here with a cool spooky carpet. We also have just a little area here with some like pots and pans. We've got also the sink. We've got all sorts. It's cool. I love it. I love also these gold and silver details in this whole house. They just ooze Maleficent. It's crazy. And this ladder here just simply goes to the second floor because we're not going to get. But I wasn't about to fit a whole set of stairs in here, so I went for a little ladder, which I think is fine as well. Now, if you go outside this door, you can actually go at the back, and there's like a little balcony here. Now this balcony is just to kind of look at the rocks I suppose, we won't really get the best view from here but I mean Maleficent's castle ain't gonna have like the prettiest views so this is quite realistic I feel, looking out over like a cavern of rocks. So I like that, I think it's a cute little addition. And then if we start over here from these little side rooms we have this sort of like, I guess it's like a spell room sort of. We have like some potions and wands and stuff over here. We've got her like spell book with her little raven friend on there. Just some like general sort of stuff down here and then if you go to this room we have like a study which looks really cool actually we've got like a chain we've got like a fan we've got a broken mirror and then we've got this really cute little magical looking desk with some moon and star imagery and this little blue swirly orb going on it's very cool very maleficent um this room here is meant to represent the scene where she cursed aurora when she was a baby um, it's more of a reference scene more than this one you would actually use, but I guess if you you played as like a regular sim and you had a baby, it obviously you can use this room, I mean it makes sense, right? And we have like a green orb which actually emits green light, very cool. And yeah, just like a simple little room here with some books. But yeah, it's like a little reference where you curse Aurora, very fun. And then here we have um, this little sort of living room sort of area, little mini one here. And yeah, some really beautiful like nature imagery of all the butterflies. This is meant to represent the Maleficent from the live action movie because she has some of that butterfly nature energy going on about her. So I thought the green butterflies would kind of fit quite well in there. I also do have quite a lot of brown colourings in here as well because obviously the live action Maleficent just uses a lot of brown tones in her clothing. Now onto the second floor, so when you get up here from your little ladder and um, we have the bedrooms, we're going to start here first. Like I said, it definitely emits a bit of the live action lifts and energy, but I love it. This is just a beautiful colour scheme going on here. Some beautiful greys and browns and blacks. It really just looks perfect, I love it. I actually used a lot of werewolves in this build actually, which is quite fun. Got this little area here, with just like a chair and some storage unit here as well for clothes. 
we've got like a uh, candles here we've got a mirror we've got some a little bookcase here and we've got a little furnace then here we have another little dining room it's a bit more of a fancier one see if we can get the whole room in here we've got a couple of chairs we've got a clock here it's very cute i love the color scheming in this room and then here we just have like a laundry type room, I wasn't really sure what to do in this room but it kind of was emitting some laundry vibes so I just kind of did this. I'm not sure whether Sim would do laundry or anything but I mean, <laughs> who knows, she might want to clean up the place sometimes, you know. And we've got these beautiful nature looking ladders from high school years which I think fit really well with this nature vibe going on. And um, we've got this little art room in this one, I mean, I'm not sure whether Sim would do art, let's be real but... I feel like a lot of people on Sims do definitely use arts to get money, so I definitely have an option to have an easel in here. I mean, to be fair, the easels are kind of old fashioned anyway, like the original Beach and the Beast movie. And if we're going like buy some of the lore from the live action one, I guess a Myth Sim would probably have a roll around to kind of do book painting and stuff. Obviously, in Anime Spawn, they would not do that, but in live action one, they might do. And then here we've just got a little bathroom here, very Maleficent, lots of black and grey and white, just a beautiful sort of Maleficent energy going on. And if we go to the top floor here, I mean these rooms don't really have much going on, they're just kind of, they just got like a single bookcase in here. <laughs> these are just mostly like transfer rooms to take you to the balcony, it's like their main purpose, they are literally turrets. And yeah, like I said, you get to this top floor here, and you have this beautiful balcony, which looks just stunning. I love these little like candles as well from one of the new kits. They just look so good with this build. It's kind of insane. Get this little balcony here, you can go to the top and just kind of hang out there. It's really cool. So yeah, we've got a couple of balconies, we've got the castle imagery. It just looks really good. I was really worried, like I said, like it was gonna turn out a bit bad because the shape of the castle isn't traditional, it's a bit all over the place, a lot of rock work, but I'm overall really happy with this. Now the main issue is though, we do have an issue with the path. The house is so big, is that like it's so big that it's kind of gone on the path, which is a bit of an issue because the rock work is just so big, it just takes up so much space. But I'm just gonna see what characters we get in this spot, and then we can always kind of bend around the path. Because I mean, these guys aren't perfect princesses; they're probably gonna have some riggedy paths with some rocks everywhere. So I can probably play around with it. This is kind of a baseline anyway, like a guideline. Anyways, so we're gonna actually spin now for this build. So let's spin the wheel. Okay. okay, and we have, oh, it was almost the King Manifico, but we got Gaston.
one I have now done Gaston's house and I think it looks pretty cute, you know, for a villain house. So let's give a look let's have a look. It's also, you know, works really well with Maleficent's house because obviously hers is like ginormous. But like I think having them both near each other actually works because it means we actually have this little gap here, which is you know like you know like I said, Maleficent's house took up the entire path. Having this little gap here definitely helps. Like Gaston's house is a pretty perfect spill the wielder. You know, it saved me from trying to work out how to put like for example, like two massive castles next to each other. Anyway, so here is his little house. I think it's pretty cute for a villain, but like I think it kind of works with this whole, you know, good person on the outside and beast on the inside sort of thing going on. I think it does fit his like two toned thing going on, his two toned personality, I suppose. And um, we've got a lot of greens, lots of browns, you know, like basically his um, color scheme that's on his house in Jubat Valley. Combined with the look of Gaston's tavern that you see in like the theme parks, it's kind of like a mixture of both, but like it's primarily meant to be Gaston's tavern, but like in, in a more homey vibe, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so we've got these cute little gnomes and barrels at the fronts, and then we've got just some like benches on the side, we've got all these like pillars around, which are quite nice, and these little side bits. It's a really nice, cozy, like cottagey house. And yeah, it definitely fits the aesthetic of Beast and the Beast, I'd say, so it definitely works well. But yeah, it's like mostly meant to be Gaston's tavern, which is very fair. Now let's go to the only floor it has, which is the first floor. Let's up the walls. Okay, this is like the kitchen slash dining room. It's very simple. It's just, it does really have that tavern vibe, which I really like. Even with the curtains, they definitely help bring that sort of vibe around and the rugs and everything. Here we have a little sitting area. Now this area is very reminiscent of Gaston, so we have like his chair. Now I couldn't have his chair with horns because that's not in the game, but I managed to get a leather chair from the um, horse ranch pack, which definitely, definitely invokes the style of Gaston's like big man chair that he has in the song Gaston. We have a little red stool. We have a little Lumiere reminiscent candle. We have the rose on there because obviously you know film imagery, and yeah, this is this whole exact area speaks of Gaston so well. And obviously as well, we even have this little fluffy carpet here, which is obviously a rug made out of an animal. I had to make up for it with like leather and fluffy rugs because I couldn't find very many items with horns in them, if at all. So I had to make that vibe of him killing animals in a different way with the leather chair and the fluffy rug. So hopefully. That came across all right, so I had enough to substitute a little bit. Over here we have his bedroom. So this is like a very manly bedroom. So we've got his little big double bed there. He's got his red side tables. We've got a little closet with some books next to it. Well, I guess not books. He doesn't read. But I, mean, I guess there's some books. It's meant to be more of a suitcase, just so we can have like a case full of his pants or something. I don't know. And then we've got his little barrel for rubbish. And then we've got another barrel here for some beer or whatnot because it is meant to be, you know, his pub that it's based off. And then we've got a little computer and a little chair there. And then if we come here, I've actually already been here, it's a really small house. Keep how small this house is. And then here we have the bathroom, it's very diddy, just like a few bits in here. But yeah, it's a really small house, but it definitely suits Gaston. I think you can tell it's Gaston's. I think for the exterior, you probably can't as much, but the interior is very Gaston coded, even if I couldn't get loads of things of horns on it like I wanted. You know, I'm generally pretty happy with his um, house. I think it came out really well. And yeah, we've got his little outside bit, which is actually super adorable. I kind of love it. <laughs> I just love like the complete opposite vibe going on here. Like look at that ginormous, terrifying castle, and then you have like this little itty bitty cottage next to it. <laughs> the whiplash is insane. Right, here's little gas on he's so fun. Right, we're going to actually spin the wheel and find out who our next person is. So we're doing four in this first part, part one out of four parts, as it always is at the moment with these little challenges. So I'm gonna spin the wheel. Oof, let's hope we get someone good, everyone. Cross our fingers and our toes. Oh, we got the newest Disney villain, Kim Magnifico.
one, I have now done King Magnifico twice. Yeah, this is his like palace downsized massively because obviously we know in the movie he has like a whole ass courtyard, he has like walls around it, but I just do not have the space for that that big. So I just chose the main central part of his castle, which is like the tower that goes up with like the triangle roof. So yeah, that's like basically what I'd argue is the main part of his castle. So I built that and I did a bit of a courtyard thing around it. You know, we got like Kim we got like the Kim Epico. We've got some like roses, you know, pink flower, you know, fountains and benches. You know, we've got like a random ass bin over there, we've got a bit of a barbecue area and like a plant down here. Like, yep, the exterior is kind of hard to decorate, but you know, I think it works. <laughs> Anyways, the tower was actually pretty difficult because there's a lot of architectural detail that this castle has, but I'm really happy with its outcome. I think it looks really good. Now let's actually go on the inside and see what his house looks like. So let's go into the first floor. So this is the um, kitchen and dining room. Let's try to get an angle that gets both in if, in, in if we can. Yeah, I think this does. So here we've got the kitchen. We got like a fridge, we got a stove and everything, and then if you go around here, we have a little dining room table. And if you go up the second floor, we have a living room, which is really cute. We got like a glass, I've got a lot of mirror stuff in this house because obviously he's all about mirrors. So we got like the living room, which is quite nice, we've got like a table and everything, it's quite cute. And then if you come around here, we've got the bathroom, which is very tiny, but very Kimonifico, like all the gold and the white detailing. And then we just have like a stove here, very cool. I love the flooring as well. I've got, I went for like that mirror imagery throughout this whole place. And this top bit here is like a balcony, so you can walk out onto the balcony and like look around. Some of my bits have glitched a bit, but I'll try and fix those. And then obviously we have Kimonifico's bedroom, which is pretty cute. I think it's really fancy and luxurious, which is obviously what Kimonifico would want. I have to show it in two angles. This is one half of his room. We've got like obviously another mirror. We've got lots of greenery. We've got a cute desk, and then here we've got his bed. We've got a peacock there. We've got a really cool light, which looks exactly like something from Roses. We have this really big sort of rug here, which is really nice. And then we've got, yeah, we've got his bed here. All looks really really cool and we've got the door out to the balcony and then yeah that's the top of his house and there we go that is coming if we done i think it turned out way better than i thought it would to be honest and we've got all the roses fun going on with that so it looks really good and yeah i went for obviously you know i tried my best to emulate the culture that's shown in like the architecture of his house and everything and i think it just really stands out as like a really unique sort of house that he has so that's very cool now um, yeah, let's spin for the next character and see how our final character will be for this video in part one. So we're going to spin the wheel and the final character that we're going to do is dun, 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 is Lady Tremaine. So of course we'll be building the Tremaine Manor. So yeah, we'll be building that next.
Okay everyone, I've now made Lady Train's home, so let's have a little look about what we have done. I think it came out really well. Now, I did have to redo the house because my game basically, uh, it lagged and it stopped responding and all that jazz. So yeah, I kind of lost all my progress, which is a pain in the ass because uh, yeah, when you're like, um, well basically, it stopped responding whilst I was on like the loading screen, like when I was going to manage wills, so it's kind of like the worst place for it to not respond, because it means you can't even like cheat to like save your work or anything, so yeah, I lost everything, so I had to do it again, but luckily Lady Tremaine had like a reasonably simple house to redo, so it, you know. But I'm just saying, if there's anything noticeably different, it's because I had to redo it again. Anyways, let's have a little look at the Lady Tremaine house anyways, after all that. Okay. So here it is, here's the Lady Tremaine house. I think it looks super cool. There are some really weird shadows here because they're like from Kim and Fico's place. But yeah, this is the Lady Tremaine mansion. I think it's really cool. Now, it's really big because, I mean, it's a mansion, but like it is like particularly <laughs> big next to Maleficent's castle. But yeah, I think it is really cool because obviously as well, when it comes to like um, wall heights, you can't really change them if they're all in the same lot. So you have to kind of keep them all relatively similar. I think it actually works out well because I mean her estate, her chateau is like basically her castle so I think it's pretty equivalent to you know a castle anyways but yeah this is basically a huge ass mansion because yeah she has she has a lot of money and well she has a lot of money after she killed you know, Cinderella's dad and whatnot well supposedly killed you know the man for the money but anyways we have like the house here so we have like this little back bit here with all these you know little back here and then we have like Cinderella's castle at the top castle her her tower I guess it is yeah her tower is here and then you've yeah, got the rest of this back half of the um home there we've got like some cleaning supplies so Cinderella can clean the house and we've got a little topiary there which I thought was kind of cute but yeah it's actually a really really fancy castle well castle I keep saying castles now it's a really fancy house despite the fact she's a villain because she has high standards and she's quite proper so like Kim and Ifiko, she has quite a fancy place so let's go and have a look shall we this one is really detailed because I also added in um, Anastasia and Gisela's Gis rooms as well and I even added Cinderella's room because the thing is with Lady Tremaine's house because it's like a natural house and it has natural floor layout you can kind of you know make it a bit more realistic I suppose so let's just go and start on this first floor. So this is obviously the main floor. So if you when you come in here, we have the dining table over here, and we have like you know the clock and a bit of a fireplace here. It's really cute and cozy. I love it. And then if we go into this little room here, we have the bathroom. So here we have the um, shower and the toilet. We have Anastasia and Gisela's nightgowns. And we've come over here, we've got Lady Tremaine's nightgown, we've got the sink and also the mirror. And then if we come over here, we have the kitchen. It looks really good. We've got a little fruit bowl there. We've got some plates, we've got the bunny, we've got the sink. Yeah, it's a really cute little, um, yeah, it's a nice little kitchen there. So there we go. Now let's go to the next floor. And, ooh, okay. Let's start in this entrance bit first. Um, so if you come in, we have a little living room here, which is quite nice like a little old tv and everything here we have a little study which well it's just basically a desk but it's really cute and cozy and then if we go into here in these big double doors we have lady tremaine's room so we have like her bed we've got like some clocks we've got some candelabras it's really cool and there's like a little mirror there it feels very lady tremaine i took direct inspiration from her room in the actual movie but yes well it's so cool and spooky and then if you come into here, we have Anastasia and Gisela's room. I mean, all three of them are villains, so you kind of got put them together. So I made it very colourful, very pink. We got the one from each one. We got Anastasia on the top, Gisela on the bottom of their little bunk, and a little wardrobe. So they have a really small room. That's because I only last minute decided I wanted to give them a room. So I just had whatever room I had to spare, basically. Anyways, if we go up here. There's more to this place, I know. So many rooms. This is like the first part of Cinderella's tower, I'm not sure why I said the castle, but you know, I'm used to her having a castle. Oops, oh my gosh, you can't even get in the tower, it's so small. Okay, okay, here we go. So we have, we come in, 
here we go so we have a chair we've got her cleaning supplies you know it's just kind of like a really neat sort of quick cleaning room it's really hard to show you guys the tower rooms because they're like you know they're really small <laughs> And then this room here is Cinderella's bedroom. So we have, oops, oh my gosh. Here we go, can we get in? Yes, okay. <laughs> we have her bed here. We've got this little cabinet here. And then we have a little mouse hole down there. But yeah, it's really cute. Well, I mean, she barely fits in here. It's a very small space and I can barely even get the camera in here because it's so small. Oh, I got in there. Bingo. But yes, her room, it looks so good. I love it. It's so blue and cute and basic, but like obviously it's really basic because like she's basically a slave to her own family. But yeah, I obviously, you know, I feel like I had to add it in because, you know, just Tower is iconic and, you know, it just made sense to add Cinderella's actual room in there. And that is the entire chateau, mansion, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's pretty big. It took a while and I literally had to rebuild it, so I'm still a bit annoyed about that, but, you know. It, it came up pretty well in my opinion and yeah it looks gorgeous and these are the four builds we have done today let's do a quick overview so we've got Maleficent's castle here which looks very nice I'm going to do the inside because I've already showed you guys the inside of these places but yeah, here's the Maleficent's castle very spooky and then we have um, Gaston's tavern very cute it's like the opposite vibe and then here we have King Magnifico's um, tower basically which is very cool. I like the zoom out there. Yes, very neat. And then after Kim Lifko's and Tower, we have Lady Tremaine's Chateau, Mansion, whatever you want to call it. And that's this final one here, which is very nice. I love it. And there we go. There are all the four builds for today for part one. Now, part two, obviously, we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be spinning the wheel and seeing which villains we're going to be doing. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And I'll see you all real soon. Bye everybody!